Hello, everyone. Welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and the Restless, Phyllis urges Billy to hire Daniel, Lucy, and Daniel catch a ball out of nowhere, and Sharon comforts Nick and Maria. Stepping out of the elevator with a massive plant, Phyllis enters Billy's office at Abba Chancellor and begins telling him about her family celebrations. He can see that some alcohol was involved. She claims that things are finally looking good for her and the children. After explaining the value of Feng Shui, they talk about Chance's resignation and her taking over his role. Phyllis claims he was a fantastic cop, but that doesn't necessarily translate to the corporate world. He is unable to navigate the line between right and wrong in the manner required. She's been thinking about the happiness trifecta, and what would truly make her happy is if they brought her son back into the organization. Billy is pondering it, but they have more important things to deal with right now. He offers to drive her back to the nightclub. She needs to place her plant in a wealth corner before they leave. Billy and Phyllis sit in the athletic club's bar, and she continues to gush about how much she wants to celebrate her son's new job. She stops herself and apologizes, noticing that things aren't going so well for her boss. Billy insists he's doing okay, but she reminds him that their relationship ended Adam hit him, and Victor swore war on him. She's concerned about what Victor's plans will do to his family. He recognizes that things may grow difficult for Johnny and Katie, but it is their grandfather who is fighting, not him. Phyllis reminds him about Victoria's offer to buy him out and avoid the fight. He claims this isn't about money. It is about preserving his mother's legacy. He's motivated to prove his critics incorrect. I'm digging in. Abba Chancellor is not for sale, he says. According to Billy, Phyllis believes he will lose this fight. Phyllis believes he can defeat Victor, but is he willing to risk losing everything and facing public humiliation? Billy is adamant that this will not happen. She implies that he is doing this because he enjoys the excitement of taking risks, which may have ramifications for his children. Are there any other options? Billy thinks his children are the most important thing to him. That is why he intends to capitalize on Victoria's concerns about her father's strategy. Phyllis doesn't understand how that would work. Billy is confident that Victoria does not want a family fight and will tell him what her father has planned. Phyllis teases him, suggesting he's using the youngsters to gather information. He'd rather pretend he's assisting Victoria in helping him. She is all for it if he believes he can make it work. However, she is concerned that he is experiencing conflicting emotions. Billy is clearly emotional and harbors a lot of rage, which is festering and clouding his judgment. Phyllis warns him that he is about to face the fight of his life and he cannot act rashly. It is time to be emotionless. I've never felt more prepared, he tells her. Daniel and Lucy chuckle as they walk into their apartment, fresh from the movies. They yell for Heather till they realize she isn't there. This is weird, he says. They did not receive any SMS or messages from her. Lucy assumes she has gone to get bananas for breakfast. Her father decides to phone Heather to find out. Sharon recalls dropping Heather's body into the sea before walking down the stairs to join Nick and Maria. They don't want her to feel like she's being watched, and they simply want to support her in any way they can. Sharon has apologized for her recent behavior. She was in a poor position and had no idea what was wrong with her. After fleeing, she has returned home, safe and able to see fully. I so appreciate all of your support, she says. Nick is delighted she returned. Maria inquires where she went and what she did. Sharon begins to choke up as she announces that she owes them the truth. Sitting down, she describes how she fled because she was desperate and felt continually confronted. The pressure was too much, and she feared she'd lose control altogether. That was terrifying, so she did what she needed to do. 
Sobbing, she apologizes to them. Her head is still spinning, and she hasn't worked everything out. She seemed to be doing the most sensible thing. That is why she confessed. Confessed to what? Nick inquires. Shara explains that she confessed to Cassie. She went to her grave and told her everything that had transpired since they lost her. It prompted her to think about her life. She expressed all of her anguish and remorse since the accident. Nick assures her she is not to blame for what occurred. Sharon was unable to emotionally accept this. Those feelings festered, leading to some horrible choices. Talking to Cassie helped her accept things for the first time in a long time. It's as if she's finally gotten off the roller coaster ride and discovered some stability. Nick considers this a positive step, but he hopes he consults her doctor. Sharon says she's already scheduled an appointment and is prepared to work closely with her doctor to get to the bottom of this and reclaim her life. Nick encourages her to continue her recovery journey. They all stare at Sharon's suitcase as a phone rings inside. Is that a new ringtone? Maria asks. Sharon believes it's only a reminder for her to take her medication. She leaps up, pops a pill, and swallows. She tells them she's home and will be okay, so they don't have to worry. All of their words had soaked in, which is what drew her home. Nick reassures her that their support would never fade away. Sharon is fatigued and needs to rest. They get the hint. Maria gives her a hug, tells her she's delighted she's home, and leaves. Sharon convinces Nick that she can make it through the night. He offers her a hug before leaving. Back at Daniel's apartment, he and Lucy leave Heather a message. She wonders if her mother aced her job interview and is returning to surprise them. When Sharon is alone at home, she takes out Heather's phone. That was a close one, huh? Cameron asks her. She listens to the message Daniel and Lucy left for her and thinks they have arrived home. Sharon wonders why Heather had to return home and how things had to turn out this way. Cameron encourages her to continue hiding her tracks. Instead of wondering how this happened, she should worry about how to avoid being caught. He tells her she's strong and warns her not to give up now. He assures her that acquiring Heather's phone, blocking its tracking, and hiding it from her family were all great. When she starts to panic, he tells her not to get too emotional. This is the time to concentrate, not to goof up. Shara decides to send an SMS to convince them Heather is still alive. Lucy tells her father how great it was to hang out with him tonight at Daniel's apartment. She recognizes that she has made mistakes this summer. Her father admits he made far worse mistakes, but he learned from them. Lucy is overjoyed that her parents are back together. Daniel believes she's growing into a brilliant and powerful woman like her mother. His daughter is eager to apologize to her again and emphasize the importance of family. Heather sends in a text. Daniel frowns as he reads it and informs her that her mother will not be returning home. The text states that she needs to leave town to clear her mind because the situation with Sharon is too stressful. They're both surprised, and he messages back, asking her to call. Leaping up, Lucy begins to worry that this is her fault and that her mother is upset with her. Daniel tells her to calm down and claims her mother would not take off to punish her. If anyone is to blame, it's Sharon. They investigate the flat for clues. Lucy discovers an overnight bag and some clothes have vanished. Daniel noticed Heather's car in the garage, so she must have taken a taxi to the airport or something. They have to think she will return in a few days and call shortly. But she was fine this afternoon, so this is weird and unexpected. Back at Sharon's, she reads Daniel's text to Cameron, who instructs her to let Romilotti stew. She will not answer since she does not want to accidentally tip him off. She is concerned that an investigation will begin in a few days if Heather does not show up. She believes that because she has repeatedly slammed that family in public, she will be investigated. He proposes that she shed a few tears and act sorrowful. That will be the end of it. You are like the queen of tears on demand, he remarks, referring to how readily they worked on her family. 
Sharon believes it is time for her and Cameron to end their relationship. He reminds her that the last time she abandoned him, she crawled back. Some doctor is not going to give her magic medicines to make things better. The only way you're going to get out of this is with my help, he insists. She orders him to leave, but Cameron does not believe she means it. There are still things they need to accomplish. Sharon wants to make amends for killing Heather. He believes that won't happen as long as Daniel lives. Sharon recommends that Romilotti consider leaving town if he believes Heather will not return to him. This would free up her home. Cameron dismisses this as wishful thinking, claiming that Daniel has not paid enough. She deserves the tranquility she seeks, which may require getting your hands filthy. When Sharon declares she is finished, Cameron says, You've already hurled the metaphorical stone. Why not kill two birds with one stone? Next on The Young and the Restless, Victor challenges Victoria's allegiance to Billy. Kyle outwits Audra, and Nate receives a strange letter. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe for more information. I'll see you guys next time.